Hello and welcome back to the channel. Following on from last week's short unboxing video, I am back today with the full review of this reissued bullhead model from Citizen to answer arguably the most important question, should you buy one? So without any further ado, let's get into the review. And here we have it, that retro loveliness of the Citizen Bullhead reissue. Uh, so dimensions really, really quickly. This has a case width of 38mm. We have a thickness of 12mm. The lugs on this one are 18mm with a relatively short lug to lug distance of 41.5mm. On its bracelet, this one weighs in at 99 grams. So, as I mentioned, this is a reissue uh, of a watch, Citizen made the Bullhead watch from the 70s. Now, the one in the 70s uh, had an automatic movement, the 8110 automatic movement from Citizen. This reissue is, of course, quartz. Now, I don't have an issue with that. I think uh, Citizen have actually played a bit of a blinder here. They've went quartz. Uh, it's been a lot cheaper for them. It's a lot cheaper for us to buy. And of course it is a bit maintenance free, you don't have to worry about servicing costs like you do with an automatic. Pop a battery in every two or three years and you're good to go. So I think it was the right decision the decision from Citizen. Uh, it allowed me to buy it certainly, whereas an automatic probably would have been priced well out of my range. So the specs on this one, we have a lovely stainless steel case. Now, as you can see, the stainless steel case itself has got a beautiful level of brushing on it. Uh, the brushing is done in such a way, there's no polished parts of the case, uh, and the brushing is done in such a way that it makes the lines of the case flow together. Uh, they've done really well with that. I think it's a really nice effect. And of course, it's nicely contrasted with that high polished black bezel. Um, you've got the classic bullhead design of the crown at 12, the stop start pusher at 11, and the reset pusher at 1, and it just looks lovely. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of the bullhead design. You don't see a lot of them these days, uh, but it's very, very nice. Now, covering uh, the dial on this, we have a domed mineral crystal. Again, no sapphire at the price point. I'm not too surprised. I'm not too bothered, to be perfectly honest. Uh, the mineral they've went with is domed, and it looks great. Uh, it really it really looks nice on the watch. Um, now, let's talk about water resistance. As it says on the dial, 50 metres of water resistance isn't very good. Well, it depends what you're going to do. This is not a dive watch. Uh, partly the 50 metres is due. The crown is just a snap in and snap out. It is not screwed down. And the case back, if I give you a look at the case back, is simply a snap-on case back. Now, a little bit annoying for some people, of course, me included. I would like to have seen a screw down case back, but again, at the price point, being quartz, well, I can kind of understand what they've done there. Uh, it does have a 50 meter water rating, so I'm sure it'll be fine for washing your hands if you're caught in the rain, that kind of thing. I'm sure it would be absolutely fine. So again, no real qualms about that. Um, I, I'm fine with it. I know a lot of people won't be, but I, I've kind of reckoned that the price and what they're trying to do with this reissue yeah, I get it. Uh, the movement on this one is the Myota Quartz Citizen's own make. Uh, it's calibre 0510. Again, chronograph movement, um, no problem at all. It starts, it stops, it resets, it counts the time. <laughs> what more do you want from a chronograph? And it looks good doing it. There we are. The dial on this one, the dial is beautiful. Uh, this, of course, is the dark blue variant. Um, this one, the model number is AN3660-81L. Uh, the dial is really, really nice. As you can see, we have an almost sunburst effect of that dial. Really, really nice. Uh, and the dark blue colour contrasting really nicely with those orange hands. Again, as I mentioned in the unboxing video, we have a lovely sunken subdial dial if you know what I mean. Uh, the subdials are sunk down and they look great for it. Sometimes on uh, what I tend to find is cheaper chronograph watches 
uh, the dial is all one level, they're not sunken in and it just looks cheaper. Me personally, I don't particularly like it, but I'm really, really glad that Citizen have went with uh, sinking the subdials down just that little bit. It makes it look much classier in my opinion and it looks all the better for it. Now, while we're on the subject of the dial, um, as you can see, it has loom markers. Now, this is not a chronograph. This is not a dive watch. I should say it's a chronograph watch. Should we be talking about loom? Well, in my opinion, if there's loom on the dial, then it's worth talking about. So, as you can see, the loom on this watch is fantastic. Now, <laughs> it doesn't have the amount of loom that a dive watch would have. There's not much loom in those uh, hour and minute hands at all. But just look at that glow. It looks fantastic. And if you are caught in a dark room or a cave or, or somewhere where you should need to tell the time in the dark, this one you will be able to do so. Uh, I think it's a lovely touch that Citizen have included a loomed dial on this one and it just looks great. Um, I don't know what compound Citizen use, but look at that. It glows fantastically. Uh, now, on this watch, we have the stainless steel bracelet. Now, as you can see, when I first looked at this watch, I thought the bracelet is gorgeous. And I do think the bracelet is gorgeous. It has that complete 70s retro feel. We have a vertical brush to all those horizontal links. Uh, and it looks fantastic. We have a very cool system uh, for resizing as well. Like I say, you don't remove any of these links. This little part just flips up, allowing you to move the clasp up and down. Uh, and then, of course, this part here simply hooks on and becomes solid uh, with a double lock system. So, very, very nice bracelet. I think it looks fantastic. However, well, I do have a little niggle with it. Um, if you look at the relation of the thickness of the case, as I said, this case is 12 millimeters thick. Not thick by any means, but if you look at how thin that bracelet is, just look at that in relation to the case. Now, I know this is a folded bracelet. That means that these links aren't solid. As you can see, they are folded pieces of metal, which is fine. Uh, it does remove some hairs, I'm not going to lie, but I think the bigger concern is the thickness of it. It's just too thin to make the watch wearably comfortable, in my opinion. Um, you can have this on your wrist, and if you are the kind of person that wears this very, very tightly, then you probably won't notice that much. It might be a little top-heavy, but if, like me, you like a little bit of movement, then what you find is that the watch head... Uh, is so much heavier than the bracelet that it causes it to flop about your wrist a little bit. It's not a massive issue because I do think that this watch would look fantastic on different straps, but it's a little bit of a niggle uh, if the strap that comes with a watch has a bit of a flaw like that. Uh, that said, uh, there are lots of different strap options for this watch. You could pop it on pretty much anything you like, including other bracelets, uh, and it would be fantastic. Uh, I have to say, I've been wearing this for about a week now, uh, and while I'm moaning about the bracelet, the thickness of the bracelet, I have been able to wear it. Um, it is a bit of a bugbear that it keeps flopping about a little bit. You could just say, well, tighten it up. It's not really how I like to wear my watches. I like a little bit of movement in them, uh, which is, of course, exacerbated with that really thin bracelet and the sort of offset weight of the watch head itself. And that's not to say that this is heavy. It's not on its bracelet. It is only 99 grams, so it's not a heavy watch by any means. Uh, but I think it would be much more wearable with a thicker bracelet. So let's talk about price then. This is a Japan-only watch. It's a JDM model, Japan domestic market, only available from Japan. So you have to pick it up from an online retailer. Um, I paid $300 for this one, um, which is only £220, there or thereabouts. Fabulous price. I got it from a website called Japan Select, which I shall show you. I had a great experience with Japan Select. It was the first time buying from them. This watch arrived uh, with me in the UK from Japan in just over a week, so I was delighted. Uh, there are a couple of caveats with the price. Now, these are pretty popular, I believe, uh, and there are a few different model variants which are quite hard to find. And even the ones that are still available, there are some sellers out there offering them at 
quite a bit more than three hundred dollars. It's up to you what you want to pay. Um, I would wait for one of the main sellers to offer this at close to its retail uh, for the best value. Um, that said, of course. Um, you do have unfortunately import duty buying this from japan you have to get it imported which costs money uh and yeah a bit of an issue but if you factor that into the price of the watch it's not a massive deal so final thoughts then so this is a reissue of a classic very very cool retro model and design which is made even cooler because Brad Pitt's character wears it in the Tarantino movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Very cool to see it kicking about in popular culture like that. Uh, and it is a very, very good looking watch. It's a handsome beast. Uh, and I think that the, one of the main benefits of it, that it is quartz. Uh, it's relatively cheap, folks. This is only over £200. With your import duty, you're maybe talking 250 It's a bargain. Look at the amount of cool to the amount of money. Uh, it is fantastic again a big surprise for me on this one was the loom uh, it's a great addition it's not a deal breaker on a chronograph by any means uh, but it was a fantastic little find the loom on this one is brilliant now uh, the downsides for me are the bracelet the bracelet is just too thin uh, it is wearable don't get me wrong perfectly wearable but it is a bit annoying uh, and the other issue or the other uh, thing to consider is that import duty if you're buying from japan uh, to the US, to the UK, you will have your import duty to pay and of course there seems to be a bit of limited availability as well. So with all that said, I think that this is a little gem of a watch from Citizen. It's well worth picking up if you like the design. It has heaps of retro cool and history from Citizen and a modern and affordable package. Um, now that bracelet, like I said, uh, don't be put off by the poorer bracelet i wouldn't be put off by it there are a whole plethora of bracelet strap options out there uh, you could pick up another solid bracelet for this one you could put it on a bun strap a leather strap take your pick uh, but don't let that put you off so yes i am very impressed with this one uh, and i do hope that reissuing past models uh, is something that citizen plan to do a lot more of in the future so, as always folks, thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, your support does mean a lot to me. I will put links in the description where I picked this up and perhaps other places you could pick it up. Uh, and if you have any questions, then please do let me know down below. So, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next review.